G'day everyone, Greg here from Fish Plate Films, and we're back for our third instalment on scenery. Yes, I know it's hard to believe that we're actually doing scenery videos, but I've sort of been bitten by the bug a bit, trendsetters. And today we're doing rock moulds, and I've got to say, you know I love my hot glue gun, but I think I like my rock moulds a bit better. Well, the same. Let's not pick favourites. Anyway, they are incredibly easy, even for me. So, I picked up a few tips on the internet and put my own little spin on some of them and I will show you how to make flawless rock moulds, or should I say flawless rocks, using uh, Woodland Scenics rock moulds. And uh, there are other ones out there, but I thought I'd just try with Woodland Scenics. So, without further ado, folks, let's get into it. So, the first thing I guess is we have our moulds, our Woodland Scenic moulds. Now, the, the great thing about rock moulds is if, even if you buy one, you can get multiple rocks out of the one mould. So if you want to, you know, you can just fill it to this little area here if you put the mould on a side, that's what we'll be doing with this one. And, or let's say you want this really, this little uh, shelf bit of rock in here. Well, you could literally just fill the mould just to there on an angle and you just get this bit. Or depending on how deep you cast the rock, you'll get totally different rocks. I actually cast a rock, folks, out of one of these moulds and I can't fit it into any of the moulds because it just doesn't fit. I don't know where it come from, but it doesn't fit, so I've cast it somehow, and I just can't get it to fit in any mould. It's amazing. So you can literally get hundreds of rocks out of one rock mould. So that's one thing. We'll be using that one today, and we'll be using this one here, which is also quite deep. It's got a quite deep bit here, but I won't be using that. I'll be putting it in this tray of sand, which is another tip. They said, uh, the gentleman said use kitty litter, but I like the sand a little bit better. So what you can do, you can rest the mould in that, and tilted and it supported the whole way. I only want this little section along here and uh, without these this couple of big crevices that are here. So we'll be using those two. So, right, so that's our mould. Our next thing is our plaster. And I decided that since we're casting plaster moulds, I'm going to use casting plaster. Now I know you guys in the States and Canada use Hydrocal. It's got a couple of different numbers and serial numbers for it. We don't have that down here. Well, you can get it down here, but it's very expensive. We have Giprock or CSR plaster or Boral plaster. So I thought, right, I'm casting rocks. Why don't I use bloody casting plaster? Because that's what we're doing, aren't we? Yes. So I went and bought myself a 20 kilo bag of casting plaster, which was almost as cheap or as cheap as plaster of Paris. And I have to say, I've tried both. I would never ever bother casting rocks again in plaster of Paris. I would use casting plaster, or the equivalent in the USA. Now, what we need is a release mould so our, our plaster doesn't stick. Another tip I got off um, another gentleman on the internet, a laundrel, I think. Thank you very much for these tips. He's a, a G-scale modeler. Um, you can use wet water, like water with a bit of detergent in it. He reckons the old Windex transcends. So. We'll just give that a bit of a spray. Now don't worry about the suds in there, they'll go away in a minute. And we'll do the same with this one. And then you get your brush. Now, always have two bowls. You see we've got two bowls here, we've got our, our plastic bowl, that's our water, and our wash water for our hands as well. And we've got our glass bowl. If you can, folks, use glass or ceramic to mix your plaster. Stay away from plastic. Uh, I've tried both and the difference is quite a bit, especially plaster of Paris. Uh, I've started putting some plaster of Paris around on the layout and to fill in around the rocks and I've tried mixing it in plaster. Ah, oh, tried mixing it in plaster. I've tried mixing it in plastic and I've tried mixing it, well I'm just getting rid of all these little bubbles here making sure that the uh, where uh, Windex is over the whole mould. Now even when you do this with the brush you create a few more bubbles but they go away. Trust me. Trust me I'm a doctor. Well I'm not really but I'll have a look at it for you. <laughs> oh that one never gets old. Okay so we've done that. They're ready to rock and roll. Now the next thing, uh, the magic I reckon, the real magic trendsetters, is mixing the plaster. Now we're using casting plaster as I just said and the difference between the two, that and plaster of Paris is amazing, especially when you mix it. So, let's get into this and we'll show you how to mix plaster correctly. Thank you Derek from G, DG Modelworks and also Alondra for showing us how to correctly mix plaster. Let's have a look. Now, rule number one, always add the plaster to the water. 
never the water to the plaster. And if you're using uh, the plaster for uh, like around your layout and you want it to have a longer setting time, then you would try and mix it as cold as possible. And some people even put uh, ice around here where they're mixing, the bowl around they're mixing. But since we're just putting it in a mold, it doesn't matter. So the casting plaster calls for two thirds water minimum. Two thirds water minimum to one part of plaster. So that's, I'm going to use two lots of two thirds roughly. And there we go. So that's two lots of two thirds and then we're going to do two full ones of these of plaster. So that's my water one, we keep that separate. Always keep your equipment separate when you're doing this sort of stuff. So using our casting plaster or whatever equivalent in hydrocal. Uh, and people worry about air bubbles and stuff. I've never had one, not one. So there we go, I'll put that out there like that. Here we go, now here's the magic trim setters. Don't just pour it in. Just shake it in like this and you'll see it getting soaked up by the water. This is, I couldn't believe this when I saw this the first time. And just keep moving it around. Now this is where you need patience. This is where the magic happens, I reckon, Prince Edith. You see that going in there. Now the first one goes, gets soaked up pretty quickly. The second one is where you need a little bit more patience. So here we go there, we've got our full one there. Now what I didn't know folks is that plaster doesn't start going off until you agitate it. So if you do this in here nice and gently, your working time is a lot more. And I tried it with Plaster of Paris in a plastic bowl, and I tried with Plaster of Paris in this glass bowl. The difference was amazing uh, how much better it mixed in glass. And there, uh, there is some reasons behind that. So not always practical, obviously. This is an old Pyrex jug. You know, you can get big Pyrex jugs. Just try it. Um, it's incredible. So we'll keep going here. Now you might, th you know, you get to a point where it's not gonna soak up anymore, but it will. And if you think it's a bit too runny, you can always put a little bit more in towards the end. But I don't think I'm pretty happy with that. Look, we could go a little bit more just to prove that we can, but I wouldn't. This was, as I say, 65% water to 100% casting plaster. So 65% or Two thirds water, so just a little bit over half water. Now, this is where the magic, we've got our little overhead camera here, and I don't know whether this one will pick it up too much, but I don't do it. So you can see it's got a few little lumps and bumps there. It's all pretty much all underwater. And you just go like this. Look at that, Transetters, it's magic. And that, that's mixed Transetters, pretty much. You know, I'm gonna use my, my finger the wet finger, as the, as the bishop said to the stripper. We'll, we'll do that joke again. It worked the first time. So now, now, is when the, now is when the plaster starts reacting. But this is so smooth. Uh, and I tried this with Plaster of Paris, and there was grit, and there was like I was mixing gravel, folks. So the difference in the two plasters, I can't keep going on about it enough. I know lots of people use Plaster of Paris. That's fine if you're happy with that. But I cannot say how good it is using the casting plaster. Now, that is like a runny thick shake. It's thicker than milk, but thinner than a thick shake. Right, so we've got our plaster of Paris. We've set this mold up here where we want it. So you can see that's pretty runny. So we're just gonna pour a little bit in first. And this one here. that. There's our brush. And then we're just going to go around and just 
make sure we get all the air bubbles out. Not that I've ever had any, but probably because I do this. You can tap the mould as well if you like. Some of them like a bit of a tapping. Oh, that's going to come back. Now, you can see this mould here, I've got on quite a bit of an angle. Because I want to cast predominantly on this lower section here. Yeah, and on that now we can. Now I'm not filling these all the way to the top. I think that's another thing too. That helps. Unless you want a really deep rock. Now I probably could have got I actually wanted to do this one a little bit here too, but anyway, not to worry. Use our wet brush, we'll just Now, what we're going to do is go away and wash these bowls out right now. And we're going to give these moulds 10 minutes. So it's now 12.06. I'm going to set my up. We're going to come back in 10 minutes and we're going to brush the plaster up the side a little bit. And this is a trick I got. Uh, to give the back of the mould a bit of a concave surface because you're sticking it on roughly, you don't want a flat surface. If you can make it a little bit concave, then it can go over things and it gives you that nice little edge like that. Look at the edge on that, folks. And that's really good for putting up against uh, the side so where you can blend dirt and stuff into it. And you can get really shallow mould. See the edge on that, that one there. So we're going to come back in 10 minutes. There's a good example of the concave back of the mould there. So this one's a little bit thicker, but you can see how, how thin you can get on there. So we'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll give this a bit of brush up and that'll do us until we release the hounds. Okay, it is now 10, 18. So it's a bit over 10 minutes. By well, the magic of television, we're back. And I'm just going to get my brush, just get rid of the water there. And I'm just going to brush, not down to the bottom, just across the surface of the plaster. And just get a little bit of a, most of it sinks back in there. But just drag it out just a little bit. Now this isn't a, you know, a necessary thing to do. But I think it works. I really like how it works. There we go. And look, I'll just drain the plaster in there like that. And a brush there. Now, according to the specifications, uh, it says 24 hours or 12 hours. We're going to come back in four hours and try and take these uh, rocks out and because one of the videos I watched, Landrill, 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 whatever, he was taking his out in 40 minutes, but he was using Hydrocal. Uh, but I have tried taking small moulds out, rocks out in 40 minutes, and it did work. But, you know, you're pushing the envelope, transitor. So we're going to come back in four hours, which is still a third of the time is what they recommend, minimum. Some say 24 hours. And we'll see how we go in four hours' time. Hmm. Okay, folks, it's uh, 4 o'clock, 16.02, so it's about nearly four hours since we poured our rocks. So, now they still feel damp on the top there, but uh, I've taken them out at four hours before, so let's give it a go, even though the instructions say about 12 hours, and I've seen guys take them out at 40 minutes, but anyway, we'll have a go at four hours and see what happens. Right, we'll do this one first, so here we go. You can see we split that on the end there. So, look at that. Try and... Now, I try and push from the back as well and sort of lever it out. So, look at that. Now, you can see by pulling out the edge, look how fine that edge is on there. 
So if you wanted to put that on a flat to meet up to a flat, uh, you know, hill or dirt or whatever, that would be, it works really well because you haven't got a ledge. Oh, 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 sort of wants to pop out. Now there's a little bit of a hole there, so a little bit of a hole there. I'm trying to save, where are we? I'm trying to save that. See if we can get it out without cracking that around there. It's just holding up this one. Now I've seen guys just like literally rip these things out. Oh, there we go. You can see how fine we've got it there. Look at that little edge there. So there you go. We've got, look, we've even got our hole. Where are we? Oh, pop up little weed. So there we go. That's still, that is still damp. Folks, still damp. So there we go. That's one. The, uh, the detail's unbelievable. And not an air bubble to be seen. That I can see anyway. Nope. All right, let's try this next one. So this one's a bit thicker. But same sort of deal. Just trying to push it out from the back there using these fingers as well. Now, look, it doesn't matter if, 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 even if it does break because you can use all the bits. Oh, and I just broke that with my thumb. Look at that. But mind you, it was super thin. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know if how that good that's coming out on camera there. And once again, we have, you can see, all right, well you can see there the concave back. Probably easier if I do that. You can see the depression in there. So that way, if you want to put it on a surface, the edges, the edges are going to touch a bit more, especially if you have a rough surface behind. But there you go. Very happy with that. And once again, I can't see any air bubbles there. Bloody marvellous. See, the detail is very nice on these moulds, I must say. Hmm. Well, there you go. Who would have thunk it? That it's that easy to cast good rocks and get them on your layout. Nice and easy. Get your rocks off the bench and put them on your layout. That's what I say. I have to throw that in. I can't believe how good they look. I really can't. And I've been having some good success with some colours, uh, folks. But you'll have to wait for the next video of actually putting the rocks on the layout. And that's the tricky bit, I reckon. Because getting them to look right, I mean, they look great as they are. But once you start putting them together, I think that's where the real skill comes in. And that's what I'm trying to learn. So, you know, you can just put them on top of each other, you know, and they sort of look okay. But especially when you're using, and I've found, when you're using the same rock mould, they really do look like the same one if you try and put them next to each other or whatever without doing a bit of, a bit of uh, adaption and creative carving and stuff. So that's the tricky bit. But as far as making them and getting some colour on, I reckon it's easy as falling out of bed if you had a few too many whiskies. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm really, really liking making rocks. I don't know why. Uh, and we will be putting them on the layout. Well, we are putting them on the layout now. And once I get reasonably good at that, in a few weeks' time, we will be doing a video on placing rocks on your layout and getting them to look right and join in and all that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoyed this one. What we're doing now is doing more how-to videos, shorter how-to videos. And the layout updates will not feature uh, how-to videos. They'll feature like the end, the end result, so we can have uh, a broader look on the layout updates, and they make them shorter. And then the how-tos will do them shorter, separate videos. So 
I hope you like that idea. Let me know if you do. And the layout updates will be less boring and more trains running and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks for watching for now. I've got to keep painting and doing some rocks trenches. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hooroo for now.